you are running for state senate. Absolutely. Tell us why. Why is this something you want to do, Jen? Gosh, well, if you watch the news just watching, you know, on television, and I sat in my family room and yelled at my television for several years and just was frustrated with politics in general, I think most people can agree that the political arena is so so negative and so controversial and people hate each other, and I, I just didn't like it. You know, I felt like I could do better and had a lot to offer, so instead of just sitting there yelling at the news every night, uh, you know, my husband said, you're going to yell or you're going to get off the couch and do something about it. So. So I did, and I've never done politics before. I've never held public office, but you go on the Department of Elections website and you can read about how to do it. So one step at a time, and we got our signatures and got on the ballot and worked really, really hard. It's a lot of work, big time commitment, but knocked on a lot of doors, met a lot of voters, which is the best way to kind of get a feel of the district, and uh, really just got our message out there and, and who I was and uh, why I was the best person to hold this office. When I saw you the other day following the uh, debate, um, yeah. I asked you, What's, what's your main thing? Mm -hmm. And you said? Healthcare. That's what I do. That, that's my life. I do healthcare on a daily basis. So I was a Navy pilot, you know, for uh, 10 years. I flew H 46s at Norfolk, and that was great. I did that for sea duty, deployed a couple times at Persian Gulf, and then did shore duty at NAS Oceana, flying the H 3. My husband's an F 18 guy, so it was a nice fit. We were able to co locate here. Uh, I ended up having, starting to have our family. So I got out of the Navy. We were deploying back to back. He stayed and did his 20 years. Uh, after a few years at home, that was great. I have four children. I was able to be home with them while they were young. But I uh, had a GI Bill and I uh, have a mother who's a nurse and a brother who's a nurse. And, and just really had great sets of grandparents who had big influences on me. One grandfather died of Alzheimer's disease in a nursing home. Another set had a fabulous quality of life in New York City, traveled the world. So I really saw the aging process and how there was good and not so good you know, ways to age. So geriatrics was uh, just a calling for me. I love, love old people. Those are my you know, older adults. The, the, those are the people that I want to advocate for and, and help. And so I went to nursing school at ODU, got my bachelor's degree, and then went to Vanderbilt for my master's degree in nursing uh, in adult geriatric primary care. So that's what I do. I work at EVMS in their long-term care, skilled rehab, uh, dementia floor. I also work in their memory clinic seeing patients with Alzheimer's disease and dementia, working with the geriatricians there. I also do some uh, time, part-time in primary care, primary preventative care. So I see the benefit of providing good health care for people and how if we can keep them in follow-up and regular care, we can prevent a lot of chronic and acute health care issues that happen in the future. I also do a lot of mental health screening and diagnosing and treatment in that primary care setting. So I absolutely am an advocate and have become even a bigger advocate just for treating and helping people with mental illnesses. And so if you get to the Senate, are, 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 is there one or two like health bills, ideas that you've got that yes, you so uniquely could bring? Yes, so there's not a lot, you know, it's a, it's a big issue with voters and for Virginia, always polls very high when we ask Virginians what's important to them. There's currently one physician who's a senator, uh, Senator Donovan, who sits up there right now. We need people who understand how the healthcare system works, patient populations, patient challenges. One of the ideas that has been proposed in the past is uh, a collaboration just for small businesses to be able to work together to offer some of the similar health benefits that large companies can have. So bringing healthcare costs down, what can we do to bring healthcare costs down for patients? That's a common complaint, just the rising cost of healthcare. Another thing I would like to just advocate for is how we can improve the mental health care in the state. It's an area that we can get ahead, providing better transitional care. We have inpatient psych facilities and patient mental health care, but I hear from families and from caregivers when I sit at mental health roundtables, you know, they're lost in the, in the transition. They are discharged home without the support that the families often need. Uh, so how can we give them that transitional care, provide better home health using things like telehealth, there's a lot of options out there, and using non-physician providers like myself, nurse practitioners, physicians assistants. There's room for improvement, but I think it will take people that really understand the healthcare system to be able to implement that. And one of the things, of course, that came up in uh, the, the debate last week was gun safety. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just not sure that I even know what the answer is, uh, yeah. but in the wake of what happened May 31st, it seems people want something to be done. Right. What should we do what, as a commonwealth? Yeah, and I agree with you. I mean, something has to be done. We can no longer sit, and my kids too, you know, have active shooter drills at school. And what happened to Virginia Beach can't happen again. It was truly a tragedy. One of the victims went to my church. It hit very close to home just for myself. 
in my family. It's not a Democrat and a Republican issue. This is a community safety issue. I don't know how it's become so partisan, but uh, it's what can we do to work together? And we need to listen to each other because I think both sides have legitimate concerns and ideas. So let's work together. I would love to hear from different members of the community, from law enforcement, from educators, from healthcare providers, from regular everyday citizens. You know, what, what are your ideas and your I thought, thoughts? What's important to you that we can really come up with a joint solution so that we can prevent that from happening ever again? And so going forward, do you think, do you have hope that rational people can <laughs> come together as well-meaning people? You know, I hope so. I hope so. It, for myself as a healthcare provider, I'd like to bring that piece to the discussion about it, because I think we can all agree that's a component of gun safety, just that people with mental illnesses are typically the ones that, that uh, are, are doing these acts. So what can we do as screeners? And uh, you know, I, I try to do that in my primary care setting, but how can we get emergency departments on board, urgent care centers on board? How can we screen for these people, provide treatment for these people, and really just identifying these people? So that's what I hope to bring to the, to the discussion. As a first time public office seeker, Mm -hmm. Just and also as a citizen, as you look at the commercials, not even not even the commercials in your race, just generally, you turn on TV, they're yeah. unavoidable. They, yes, they are. What do you think about the the tenor of public discourse right yeah. now? I mean, to me as a citizen, I'll say to you that I find it a little uncomfortable. I wish right. that it was a little more positive right. and not as negative as it is. It drives me crazy, right? I mean, I watch the news uh, sometimes over dinner with my whole family sitting at the table, and mom comes up and. And, uh, and the terrible things that mom has done. Mom doesn't want to take health care away from people. You know, it's, it's ludicrous and preposterous to think that a nurse and a nurse practitioner wants to take health care from people. 100% of my geriatric patient population has pre-existing conditions. So I would never, that's just an absolute absurd thought that a nurse and a health care provider would want to do that. It seems to be a common theme. I mean, our, our, this campaign has been a lot about health care, but uh, I, I hate it. I think there's a better way to do it. This is America, and, and this is Virginia. Virginians deserve better than that. You know, I feel bad for people like like you and the voters that that have to listen to that. That's all you get these days are these political commercials. I'm not a politician, so to be you know involved and to see my face and and uh, I it try it just gets under my skin. And I really think there's a better way that we can do things. What do you bring to the table as a candidate? You know, who are you? What are your ideas? What's your resume? Why should people vote for you? Tell us that. <laughs> but not to make you answer for President Trump, he, he is in your party, but you know when on a daily basis he tweets little Adam Schiff and he calls Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas and he calls <laughs> Hillary Clinton crooked Hillary, isn't yeah. he somewhat guilty yeah. of lowering the level of discourse? So you know I don't have time for Donald Trump's, Trump's tweets just like the rest of us and this election is about Virginia so even when we hear that at the doors and things we really try to refocus. This is about what's happening here in Virginia. This is not a presidential election year. We don't, we're not concerned with that. We're concerned about what's at stake here in Virginia on November 5th. So November 5th's coming, just a few days away from now. 10 days. Here's your big chance. What, what, for people that might be yeah. on the fence, what do you say? Yeah. I want people to get out there and vote. I want people to understand who I am and what I bring to the table. I'm a Navy veteran. I was a Navy officer for 10 years. That leadership experience, that type of integrity that I bring. We talk about civility and competence. Those are what key words for my race. In addition to that, I've been a mom, I've been a Navy spouse, I'm a regular everyday, drive a carpool, bake cookies, coach the track team kind of a lady. Never done politics, right? I just got frustrated and thought, well, gosh, we need people to step up and stand up for what we think is right. So in addition to that, you know, I'm a health care provider. I've spent the past eight years of my life providing primary care to older adults uh, and advocating for them and caring for their families. So that's, that's my specialty. That's my knowledge base. I just want people to really look at who's on the ballot this year and uh, decide what's best for Virginia because it's about our families and it's about the future of Virginia this time. So, so vote for Jen. So vote for Jen. <laughs> That's right. That's my bottom line. Absolutely. Yeah.